Welcome to the LARP Book Show. Uh, tonight we're going to do a very sort of special interview uh, with Emily and Sue over there. Say hello, Emily. Hiya. Say hello, Sue. Hi. Hi. And of course with me, as always, the indomitable uh, Robert Davis. How are you, Rob? I am recovering. I know you're recovering from a fantastic game at the weekend at the Forest Argent event, I believe, wasn't it? That's right, yeah. Yeah, fun. <laughs> yes, I was there briefly, took some uh, footage and what have you, and I shall be putting that later on up on in the week. Right then, so we're going to have uh, a nice discussion tonight. This should be a very interesting one in- indeed. Let me just turn down that music just a little bit so I can hear myself a little bit better. Um, so an I- interesting discussion we're going to have, right? This is basically about... Um, women in role play in role playing events right and i don't mean that in what they should do or what have you what what their um what their roles should be right but uh, emily came up with a very interesting um sort of question and observation i suppose uh, at one of the events that that rob went to um uh, so i suppose really uh, emily i will i'll ask you to pose that question if you don't mind. Okay. okay. Um, which one are we talking about? Right. The the, 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 the main one you had, first of all, in, in your observations, basically. I, I okay. just, you, I think if you, but anyway, I think it was me. I think was it was he, Sue. Oh, it's Sue. This. I do apologize. You know, uh, <laughs> Sue, pose the question then. Go for it. Uh, why is it that there are very few females who um, play in character roles as opposed to um, NPC roles. Okay, Dougie. So, so what we you know literally why is it that that women don't go along and just play player characters, yeah? Um, but they prefer to play NPCs more than anything else. Is that is 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 that kind of what you're saying? Yeah, the, the most most of the events that I that I've been to over the last uh, about twenty years, other than the the main sort of the big events, uh, the majority of the player characters are male. Um, not okay. that I mind, uh, <laughs> but yeah, the majority, <laughs> the majority of the players are, are, are male, um, and the females. And I've played played and NPC, so I've sort of seen both sides of the coin, if you if you like. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, and has has that been your experience as well, Emily? I mean, I haven't been involved with role playing events as much as Sue, um, but I would tend to agree with that. Yeah, I think there's more female NPCs in general than PCs. Okay, okay. So I'll 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 throw this question out to you then, uh, to either one of you. Um, why do you think that is? Go on, Sue. I know you've got one. I know you've got Um, I don't know. I I guess um, for the biggest part, most um, women go along to events with their um, boyfriends or husbands or partners as a kind of an add-on. Oh, come on, you like you like it. We look like it, so you'll enjoy it. Uh, and I think that's probably where women initially start and um they either like it or they don't like it i guess yeah okay um yeah no i i I can understand that i can i can see that i i can definitely see that i mean let let's be honest when we uh when i first started role playing uh it was obviously uh myself that dragged karen along um my Mm. long-suffering wife um (laughs) uh and luckily, she she loved it, um, but I mean, it could quite easily be the other way, isn't that right, Robert? Oh yeah. Oh, if you're talking about trying to drag partners along, yeah, total failure on my on my <laughs> part. Yeah, <laughs> my other half is really hates the idea. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, she looks at us very, very, very strangely, which you know. Ah, that's okay. I, I'm used to that anyway, but all yeah, right. But you know. I, I can give you a few reasons, though, to help make some sense. Go on. Go for it. Uh, that'll give you a bit of context, okay? Partially, it's 
she's not a huge fan of games per se. Right. Okay. And partly of that is a is result of Pac-Man induced trauma. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now you've okay. got to elaborate. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So back, go back to the beginning of Pac-Man, late 70s or early 80s. Yeah. Okay. She was working in the hotel industry. Yeah. Um, she was working managing hotels. And she had to spend a lot of time close to the Pac-Man machine. Okay, that'll do it. <laughs> and I had to listen to the Pac-Man waka, sound effects. Waka, 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 yeah. Pac-Man sound effects and music for like eight hours a day. Yeah. Okay, so 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 games for her in general, forget about it, it ain't going to happen. Yeah. So uh, ever since then, ever since the terrors of Pac-Man, <laughs> it's been like, I don't like games. Yeah. Yeah, she can get talking to board game and quite enjoys them, yeah. but the other part of the other part of it is to do with how lab has been in this country, and how, that is how it's been portrayed. You mean? Oh no, no, the accommodation. Oh right, okay, okay. Doesn't like bunk rooms. Doesn't like sharing rooms with people she doesn't know right. or doesn't know really well. Um, doesn't like shared bathrooms. <laughs> so basically, then what she needs is is the one is the lab that we went to in Poland. Uh, where you get uh, your own individual room. Yeah, yeah, that's what Finish. it. That's what, that's the only <laughs> only thing would work is a really high budget blockbuster lap where you get a private room and a private bathroom. <laughs> okay, then right. So, um, so <laughs> that, that sounds really nice, but um... <laughs> yeah, go on, go on. Sue. I'm not sure. I well, I'm not sure that would kind of work over here. We don't have any great big castles. Well, we do, but they're oh. all either lived in or really derelict. Well, you know, know. It, it's, it's starting to happen. Um, later it on is. this year, there's going to be a Jonathan Strange lap. Tickets are a few hundred pounds. Mm. Ah, that's what it is then. It is being held in a stately manner with full, with, with full proper private accommodation, with full, full, full hotel-style accommodation. Ah, so there you oh. go. Uh, so the, yeah, I mean, I mean, they the, they are actually beginning to happen over over here, um, yeah. but we we're going we're going slightly off topic. So we bring it back on. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> when does that ever happen? Ooh, Not like about... you, Stuart. No. no, how about every single time we ever do this, right? Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> so, um, do you think? And this is going to be me, basically being d d a little bit of generalization here and a little bit of. Um, uh, just questions that, that that pop into my head. Do you think that um, women prefer roles or, or NPC roles because they know what is going to happen rather than the uh, the surprise element of being a player character? Or am I making a complete assumption there? Go on, Emily. Um, well, it's difficult. Um... Because I, I wouldn't say I necessarily prefer NPCing over PCing, but I tend to NPC more. But that's okay. because, if you know, if you are involved in any of the write-up, you can't be a PC. Yeah. But... Whereas you can be an NPC, you know, even if you know just a bit of the story, it kind of you can't be a proper PC anymore. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. So for me, it's kind of a sense of I might know a little bit about a storyboard, yeah. and that means that I shouldn't PC because it's not fair. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. no, I can. But that's not that. necessarily because I'm a woman. That's just that's how because, it you're, because you're running. Actually, yeah. should, we give bit, should we give a bit of context, Trevor? Because everyone knows uh, about the laugh history or a little bit about the laugh history, but me and Stu. Yeah. And if they don't, go watch the podcast. You can learn loads you didn't want to know about us. Oh, lots. <laughs> um, but, but should we give a bit of context? Should we just say where where, where Emily and Sue come from in a laughing context? Yeah. Okay. Go for it. If we go to Sue first, with Emily just had a talk that uh, so could you give people a bit, bit of your i know we've been playing you've been playing for like a long time yeah but could you yeah, talk so, well, the kinds of games you're playing and what sort of background is well um I, my my first um larping event was uh laurie and trust at, at the gathering and uh my son well dan was three at the time and he's now 20 in september so that's how long we've been doing it and mm -hmm. we did it as a family okay. um yeah so we we all used to go, which was great. So and and I kind of I like I've always liked drama and that type of thing. So I kind of threw myself into it that way. Um, the the next one then for me was 
to go to a Fear of the Dark um, event, which um, Emily's mum and dad and her uncle John, uh, they helped run as well as Rob as well and a few others. So I, I went to, uh, along to a few of those and um, I've NPC'd those and, and played them as well and enjoy both in equal measure. Um, I, so I've gone sort of from doing the fantasy um, yeah. to the more sort of modern day horror. And again, I like them all in equal measure. So for me, um, I just like going to events and, and it doesn't bother me if I am the only female there because I get on with the boys and the girls, if that makes sense. So I, I could be like one of the lads or yeah. one of the girls. Yeah, but but I mean, but I mean, don't you know? Don't forget now. You, anybody that knows you know knows that you're you're you're, you're quite a strong character anyway, right? And uh, what what you see is is what you get uh, in, in in that respect. You know, there's no there's no Ooh. dark hidden uh, what have you with you. So it's like here I am. I'm Sue Ra. Um, uh-huh. <laughs> you know, and um, for perhaps. Um, a younger woman's perspective on it that doesn't have the I am Sue, here I am, rah. Um, you know, when you first started, I mean, I, I, I know you, Emily, you know, I've, I've actually known you probably all your life. Um, <laughs> you know, because you kind of grew up with my daughter as well in, in that respect. Um, you've been role playing since you were a child. I mean, since you were a very small yeah. child. Uh, my first memories are like um of of role playing are uh well being taken along to fear of the dark events with my sister and being shut up in a room and told not to leave uh <laughs> because things were going on and we didn't really want, want to know what they were um, and another early memory was um again at a Lorian trust event where um my mum had to explain to me and my sister that she wasn't actually going to get hanged it was all in game <laughs> and me and her, we were like, sobbing. That. Yeah, and we just couldn't understand that it wasn't real. Uh, yeah. So that's some of my early memories of uh, role playing. Yeah, um, and there, and there yeah. we go, some traumatized children for you, everybody. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, here we are, just a few, not that many minutes into the interview, and we have two cases of trauma. <laughs> <laughs> so. Um, now, Emily, ex- ex- explain. I, I know we're saying about your, your early childhood and what have you, but what coming up now to, to modern day, right? Um, yeah. You're actually starting to run, you know, um, f- the, the Fear of the Dark games. Is that correct? Yeah. Um, yeah. So <laughs> scary. Um, yeah. So obviously, I grew up knowing about it, but um, I I've never really gone to one. Well, I mean, I've, I've gone to small ones and some very recent ones, but yeah. I was too young to go to a lot of them. So I just heard about them. Um, but I have been to other role playing events and yeah. really enjoy them. I really enjoy D and D and things like that. So I'm definitely really into role playing. Um, and then it just kind of, I can't even remember how it came about. It was just, um, we were trying to, cause we hadn't run an event for so many years. Yeah. And I just decided I wanted to run one and mm-hmm. uh, managed to get it done. <laughs> and hopefully it was all right. Um, it was awesome. It was, it was, it was awesome. Yeah, no, yeah, the, I, yeah, I've, I've got to have to interrupt and echoes too as well. I had a really good time. And yes, at times I'm pretty scared. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, the, the, the feedback I've had as well off other people as well is it's a big thumbs up. Yeah. Um, and, and and by the way, I am I am actually calling y- y- um, your lot now. Uh, Fear the dark, the next generation. By the way, yeah, because <laughs> you are you 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 are carrying the torch. You are continuing on with the mantle yep. of um, uh, scaring the bejesus um, out of people, uh, which is that's what, my hope. <laughs> which is what <laughs> what we used to do with great delight and glee. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah so i mean you you've seen it sort of sort of right then from childhood as as right up through you know and now deciding yeah i i i want to run my, my own uh type yeah. thing um rob rob was saying earlier on pre pre uh pre this show that yeah. um 
that Liz had some observations and questions as well. Um, and I'd just like a, a, your take on those as well. So, Rob, if you want to uh, kind of re read one of those out, and okay. then we'll, we'll get some feedback. Okay, so this came from Liz Blakeman, who's now, now a fairly major NPC within the Law of Interest system. And she's just come back from the, the May GEF event. And what she's thinking is that she's, from a law and trust point of view, she's seen this mix of men to women go up from hardly any women to about a 50-50% mix. And this is over a sort of 20-25 year period. But she's also feeling that because in the larger events, MPCing is a bit more of a privilege, something more that has to be earned. Okay. It's actually getting harder to become an MPC in the larger events because there's a bit more competition as to who should or shouldn't be them. I was just wondering, maybe has that. First of all, I think, does anybody, what, what do you think about that? Uh, well, I guess uh, from my point of view, I haven't been for for a number of years, um, yeah. and uh, I going around the different factions at the time. A lot of the um, kind of when he when I see they they tended to be female. Um, which I thought was unusual. Mm -hmm. I didn't think they... So even going back maybe five or six years, yeah. um, I think there were more females at the bigger events and they played a, a higher profile character. Um, and I don't know why that is. <laughs> <laughs> mainly, <laughs> mainly no i i know i know exactly why that is because none of us men want to take on the responsibility it's as simple as that yeah it's jolly, i well i can imagine it's jolly hard work and i i know some years ago um john and i wrote uh, trial and terror uh, and that was mm -hmm. a fear of the time. and um i remember a couple of events prior to that um emily's dad and i had a little bit of a thing and it was and I felt really bad about it afterwards and um, when um, when we did the trial and terror and it was so full on it wasn't just um, it was. like a few a few weeks it was months and months of writing and rewriting the storyboard and making sure everything was right and anything that was scripted was right and um, and you know you haven't got the training that a producer or a director has you've kind of come in this is what we want to do. We kind of get a storyboard. Anyway, to cut a long story short, it was such um, a relief that everybody enjoyed it. But also, for me, the hard work that we put in to see everybody enjoy themselves afterwards, I then went up and apologised to Sean for because uh, I, I, I had too much to drink and I was being a bit of a so-and-so. And, -so. and um, so I, I apologised to Sean and I think he's forgiven me now. <laughs> Fair enough. And um, and how about you, Emily? Um, again, it's hard. It's hard for me to talk about the bigger events just because I, um, I haven't gone to as many. Um, mm -hmm. and when I did go, I was quite young. We mm -hmm. haven't been for quite a few years now, like Sue. Um, but I have to say, I think just from my experience, that um, probably from knowing Liz partly as well, is that. There's been quite a few major female NPCs that I've seen. Okay. So maybe my whole vision of it is a bit skewed because obviously like with someone like Liz, who is such kind of a, well, now even more major NPC, but she was always quite a big presence. And again, in Dragons, there were always, well, I remember there being quite a few major female NPCs. But I also found it quite hard at Laurie and Trust to differentiate between PCs and NPCs. Okay. That's, um, that's I think that's because I didn't, we didn't get involved in role-playing to as much an extent as other people. So it was kind of hard to tell who just knew more because they played more or who knew more because they were NPCs. Yeah. So it's, I don't know. It's a bit difficult <laughs> for me. Yeah. Yeah, okay. okay. I, I, I well, can understand that. Well, from my observation, just, I think there's a lot of women in high in banking in, in in the fest in, in, should we call them the fest the fest games yeah the huge game the several thousand people players yeah but i also agree there Millie. unless you know what's going on you are you there a lot you can't really tell who is a, who's a player and who's an empty i think that's great yeah it's good because you don't yeah you don't have a clue and you can just 
you know, role playing much yourselves, and yeah, it's a lot of fun. So, mm, okay, right. Um, so going on then from from that, um, in your opinion, what do you think? um women like to play more player characters or non-player characters i mean you you can only do this from your own point of view yeah, yeah. i i know and i understand that um, yeah and, and there's no need to justify it either just no we're looking for yeah. feel here so sue so, pc npc well I, as i said i think before um i enjoy both in equal measure but mm. i guess that depends on um, the other players that you're involved with. I mean, I'm lucky yeah. enough to uh, actually play with a lot of really good role players and they kind of... Um, the role playing rubs off, if, does that make sense? It yeah, kind yeah. of... Oh, no, no, when you get a great... When you get a great... Game, guess, would... Sorry, Sue, go on. Yeah, I just think that this... Um, we work with such a great group of role players that um, it's very easy to to kind of lose yourself completely in in a theme mm. and to really uh, to become that character and um, you know sort of and just the setting up and preparing you know if you're preparing to be a character um, I don't know if other people are like me I, I I like to kind of immerse myself in that character. So depending on who I'm playing, um, like I'll, I'll do some historical research. I'll make sure that the costume I wear is pretty accurate for the, for the time and the place. Yeah. And, you know, if the character is, um, you know, a, a mage, then I'm trying to make sure that I know what mage spells that I have in my basket, if you like. And, so I, I, I when I when I role play or NPC, I think an NPC role for me is easier because it's given to me, and okay. then how I choose to do it because it's given to me, it's it's less for me to research. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. You could, you haven't got to build it yourself. You just got to interpret it. You just go. Oh, that's it. Yeah. I've got that. So, well, Exactly. And whereas if I'm building a character from scratch, I've got to immerse myself in it before I can become that character. Yeah. No, I, I prefer NPC in. I, I always have done. Um, yeah. You, right. know, you know, give me give me the big bad. Give me the the sniveling, horrible little thing in the corner, whatever it is, you know, and um, <laughs> off, off I'll go and do it. But go and go and play the old wise man with a predilection to chocolate um and you know i'll off, off i'll go and, and do that um so yeah with me with me it's it's npcing now mm -hmm. whether or not that's stereotypical of blokes because we're generally lazy and want to be handed everything uh who knows but <laughs> except john of course. i'm I mean, not gonna comment on that i'm, I'm i mean i mean uh John is 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 the the exception to the rule, of course, because he likes to build uh, three thousand pages of backstory for any character yep. that he that he actually plays. You know, um, <laughs> which I had great delight in throwing away a character of his once that he did made. <laughs> Going like, cool. you're not going to need that. <laughs> oh, yeah. Not a fan. Well, there we go. So, uh, how about you then, Emily? What what do you prefer, PC NPC? Um, it is quite difficult. Um, I, I'd say probably PCing, which is weird for me because I like organizing things. So, <laughs> and that's really not what you do when you're a PC. Um, I think it's like the mystery, you know, you, you don't know anything that's going on. Mm. So if it's a scary event and you're going to feel, you know, really scared, but you'll never feel like that if you're NPCing, even if you're a minor NPC it'll be a bit less. Yeah. Um, there is some kind of joy in knowing something as an NPC that the players don't know. Um, but I think ultimately the adrenaline rush is bigger if you're a PC. And I think it's also nice if sometimes you go along to events and you've never met another PC before, so you don't really know, you don't know them out of yeah. game. So, and that doesn't happen 
that hasn't happened that often to me, but it's something that could happen if you PC, but if you NPC, it's not going to happen. No, that's right. Yeah. I suppose, you know, mm. the, the, the whole thing about role play um, and being a player character is the sheer fact of it takes you, it, it takes you out of your comfort zone. Um, and, and that, that's good. And that's healthy for, uh, you know, uh, a lot of people to kind of uh, have that experience then uh of i am not in control especially especially if you are usually in a position of control whatever it is that you do on a day-to-day -day basis you have absolute control over by going to mm -hmm. a, a you know mm -hmm. uh, an, an event as a player character no you're thrown in the mix with the basic of knowledge that you're given mm -hmm. at the beginning of the game about what the game is about you know time in rock on um mm -hmm. and I, I honestly feel it's it it's good to throw people in at that deep end. Just mm. it, it 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 proves a little about what you're made of as well. <laughs> you know, you suddenly realize yeah. you know you, you think you might be able to handle stressful situations, but until someone um, throws a dead carcass at you uh, or whatever, or someone is running down the stairs with a knife in your general direction. Uh, you, you suddenly realize, um, ho holy crap, I have no idea what to do here. I would be rubbish in a, <laughs> in a situation like this. Because um, <laughs> all, all you've done is, is stand there and go, ah! you know, uh, <laughs> not, and, and not actually handled it. So, yeah, but it is, it, it is interesting. When we went over to, to, to Poland, Rob and I, mm -hmm. um, it was interesting to see, actually, it was interesting to see a lot of women uh, take on roles as men. You know, so oh. they, you know, they, they weren't being women, they were being men. Uh, I'm under that. But I, th but I think that had to do with the setting, though. Because the game was, because the game you missed was that. Set. You missed that, Rob. You missed that. Go on. Let, go on. What that completely. I Emily, shut up. Emily, Emily said, my well, mum does that. Yeah, she does. <laughs> yeah. She's got a cracking beard. She has. Oh, don't. she got a famous beard. <laughs> um, it up. Uh, dare, uh, dare I say it? Emily, is there any chance of having a photo of the beard to put, to put in the notes to this uh, broadcast? I think there's already multiple. I'll have to, I'll have okay. to ask her. It's probably <laughs> sorted out for you. I don't want to. No, don't ask her. Just send us one. It's all good. <laughs> I'm sure she'll be fine with it. Okay. Oh, she won't mind. It's whether I'll mind. <laughs> you don't want to parade it. But... the embarrassment, isn't it, Em? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I remember her beard, which is really good. It's better than my dad's beard. <laughs> <laughs> so so what What were you saying, Rob? It was, yeah, but I'm trying to work out if that was because they like to play men or because it was a setting in that it, it was 1970 the setting was 1917 mm. and that's a society where women had really limited freedoms and yeah. if they wanted to act with any kind of freedom as well it was actually easier to do it as a man than a woman mm. i think um john did a cthulhu once mm -hmm. um a few years back and they were all male characters and yeah. i and i said oh does that mean i can't come then he said well yeah but you'll have to play a a male, a male character. Yeah. So I said, "Oh, all right then." So that, but that was quite liberating. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because yeah, I I felt quite liberated by that because, um, even though we didn't have to dress up, you know what I'm like, Stu. I like to dress up. Yeah. So I, I did like. kind of, I did paint a beard on my face and put my hair up under a hat and wore male clothes. Because yeah. that way, even though it was just a like a, a Cthulhu, which isn't a role play event, I felt like I was a man, and I okay. talked like a bloke and swore like a bloke and drank like a bloke. <laughs> you swear, you swear and drink like a bloke anyway. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> I'm a lady. I'm a lady. I do ladies' things. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Rob, got any more questions? <laughs> Quickly. <laughs> oh, the um, sexism. 
Uh, actually, just can we just a bit more on the Nordic a second? Yeah. Okay. It says uh, yeah. There were so the, 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 but I was finding that there's probably I know in the first game there's more there's become becoming more gender together, but I felt that in the Nordic game with the people came from Denmark and Sweden in particular, it's it's a lot more equally shared out than over here still. Hmm. Yeah, I'll agree with that. I'll yeah. agree with that. So there's definitely a nationality thing going on. But yeah, we okay, so so somebody over the weekend, I'm not gonna involve names on this one, except to say it happened at a long interest event. And that's and that's got no no inclination toward the event. Yeah, I think that just indicates that when you get as the other lapping gets bigger and more mainstream, the big events will attract in more more people. Yeah. Yeah. Just sheer numbers. The sheer numbers is gonna bring in the, the good and the bad and the ugly. In, I had my first account. I had my first account of an actual sexual assault, at a lapping event. Okay, where somebody tried to rearrange a woman's dress to better show her cleavage against her will. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I'll. That's really awful. <laughs> I'll, I'll take this first one. Yeah. Like, like, like everything. Right. The the more people you get going along to an event, whether it's it's football role play whatever you know a concert doesn't matter by sheer amount of numbers there will be a percentage of dickheads it's as simple as that right um and unfortunately you know you're going to you're going to get them the, the the more the more mainstream larp goes the bigger the events get you know you are you are just going to get by sheer um average you know laws of averages you're going to get people that are idiots. It's as simple as that. But, you know, have uh, have either of you sort of um, come across anything like that? And and um, if not, how on earth do you, do you think it should be handled? Um, in all honesty, I don't think I ever have. Mm. Uh, no, none of the events I've ever felt... Um, uncomfortable yeah mm -hmm. uh, just just because i'm a woman um i have had a few laughs with people but then that that's me anyway mm -hmm. it's like you know a generalized um mild flirtation if that's you know yeah. but i guess that i suppose from a male's point of view that could have been misconstrued as being sexist towards a man but you know that would have never been my intention. It was just having a laugh with some mates. If that, you know, I just let uh, it go on. I just let it go on record by here. I didn't mind at all. <laughs> 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 mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, I guess that's it, um, it. It depends what type of person you are and how you take that. I guess. Um, mm. I'm guessing. If something was actually directed at me and I felt uncomfortable about it, then yes, I would have said so. But um, in yeah, in twenty odd years, I've never I've never felt uncomfortable um, with any of the people that I've role played with. Yeah, that's good. Okay. Yeah. Emily, uh, no, I've not experienced anything like that before. Um, yeah. The only kind of hint of like my gender is is kind of when sometimes i'll mention what i do to people who don't role play yeah. and then it might be surprising more so because i'm a woman than anything else yeah okay. um but i don't think that's sexism necessarily in that as we're discussing i find there's generally less women in role playing anyway so it is a bit more surprising yeah. um but no i've not really experienced anything and if i did i think i'd I'd hope to be the bigger person. Um, in practice, whether that would happen, I don't know. But. So punch them squarely in the nose then, obviously. I'm not saying that. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I think, I think that's, that's, that's both made. Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, if, if I ever kind of um, saw something like that happening, well, num number one, I'd be outraged, and number two, I, I'd, I'd want to do something about it there and then. Um, yeah. If 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 somebody sort of did something like that to um, to Katie, my daughter, number one, I feel sorry for the fool, uh, and then uh, number two, I know that I'd have to pull her off him after she kicked his ass. Uh, yeah, you know, yeah. as simple as that. But 
you know um i yeah it is it's it's a sad fact of life isn't it that that you know as as things start start you know as this movement then of of, of people larping or what have you gets bigger and bigger that unfortunately idiots happen um but to the line trust's credit i believe what actually did end up happening is that he was immediately evicted from site yeah kicked out the get kicked out or kicked off the event and, and the police have been involved so yeah. i'm not going to do any more, more of that way at all probably yeah. more than enough uh but i think as, as we get bigger we're probably going to have to deal more with unfortunate incidents yeah yeah i agree i think maybe you're more likely to find it at, at the bigger events so i don't think so at small at the smaller events you're not going to find it at the like the fear of the dark no um certainly um because most of those um pretty much by by invitation so um i i don't think uh, there's anyone anywhere on the fear of the dark um no no i mean at, that, that are anywhere near at like the, that yeah so, at at the smaller events that, that that's probably never gonna happen right unless, no, no, unless, it, unless it's part of the game of course right you know well, yeah. um but the you know, at at the smaller events, no, no way, because just about everybody knows everybody else. You know, and yeah. if anybody, you know, if anybody did step out of line, I I'm trying to think if there's ever been an incident, Rob, of uh, the certainly the smaller LARPs that we've ever gone to, where there's ever been something like that where we've had to take somebody aside, you know, and 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 gone, whoa, 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 that's that's not on. I think. From the small lap we've done over the years, I think the only thing we've ever had to do in taking somebody aside is taking them outside for safety reasons and saying, "Stop this! You're being silly, dangerous." Yeah, yeah, I'll I'll agree, or or give them a a a lesson in um how to actually use a sword without hurting your friends, you know. Yeah, um, but, <laughs> but but as for sexism, sexual assault, no, never, not in over twenty years of lapping. Yeah, 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 definitely, definitely, um. And any other questions you want to bring up? Or oh, point you want to bring up? Go for it. Yeah. Any, any anything either of you want to bring up? Or plug? Oh. Uh, you go, Em. Uh, I don't know whether it's already kind of come up, but um, I think one of the reasons why there might be less women is is a problem of introduction to it, mm-hmm. because okay. all the women PCs I've known. All of them have been really into it, really enjoyed it, would come back. So yeah. I don't think it's necessarily that, in my experience, women go along, play, and then decide they don't like it, and then either NPC or just don't come back. It's more that there's only ever a few that decide to come. Yeah, okay. Whether that's because it's maybe a man that's saying to a group of people, I'm going to do this thing, and you know, they assume that it's more of a a guy's thing I don't know but I think it's just uh, it's difficult I think it's more like how it's how it's pitched rather than the actual thing yeah yeah I mean historically it has it has been a blokey thing you know Mm. without without any you know let's be honest it's running around you know the majority of it is running around in the woods with swords that is such a big boys game you know um it, it it goes without saying um yeah that, that, that's been a huge stereotype yeah it, it, a massive stereotype yeah. but you know with the with the sheer diversity n- now you know now it's all coming out you know in 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 the media properly as well and they're actually doing a a nice job um at it rather than ridiculing us um as they have done in the past that the sheer different uh, scale and scope of games that are now available to people. I mean, it doesn't appeal to everybody to run around in the woods with a sword, right? Um, it might appeal someone to more of a sci-fi or a more horror-themed, um, or something like we did, more of a Downton Abbey-themed uh, thing, or a Harry Potter-themed uh, thing. You know, there is now mm. so much diversity. Well, well, okay, there always has been this amount of diversity within the LARP world, uh, but it's only ever really the running around in the woods with swords one that you ever really sort of hear about per se and and that doesn't yeah. appeal to everybody you know it's as simple as that um it would be interesting to find out 
whether or not certain types of games uh, and and in fact I'm I'm going to I'm going to pose this question out to the the um the larger audience in general now um is there a game that you've actually been to where there's been a higher percentage of women than men and what was that game about um we'd like to know that uh, email email the comments to lotbook show at gmail.com because i think that would be very interesting to see whether or not one type of game attracts women over another type of game um that might be fascinating to find the the, the details on that um we asked him we could we could write uh, an amazonian one yeah i fear of the dark goes amazonian yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm sure we could Follow do that. It. Yeah, and I, I, I'm sure we could do that, no problem, and there'll be no smuttiness involved at all. Absolutely not. <laughs> not <laughs> my age, anyway. <laughs> or, or my age, you know, these, the, these days, the, the only person that I run after is the ice cream van, so um, <laughs> that's about it, really. <laughs> um, any, any more questions, any more comments, any more thoughts? Yeah, no. But yeah. this has been interesting doing this. <laughs> yeah. have, have you enjoyed yourself, Sue? Yeah, quite. Yeah, I have. Yeah, been there different. You there you go. So you know, you, you know, uh, I, e- either one of you are, are, are always welcome to come on to the show anyway. If we're having a discussion about something, just yeah. just let us know. We'll 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 drag you in. Not not a problem at all. Um, the so right so it it has been an interesting chat actually and and thank you very much for doing that so uh thank you very much emily thank you very much sue you're welcome thank you (laughs) thank you thank you um uh thank you very much rob for being along as well uh even though your internet dropped out there just for a moment fella yeah i do know that (laughs) sorry (laughs) hey internet what what are you gonna do eh? Mm-hmm. Um, so there we go so if you have any questions or comments uh, please email the show at larpbookshow at gmail.com uh, don't forget to pop across to the website larpbook.com for news, reviews and other wonderful things um, also I know as well I tell you what, I'm going to stop there just one second I'm going to kill that off because Emily we did give you an yeah. opportunity right? but you didn't actually do it do you want to plug the next Fear of the Dark game? Um. okay um, is this on air? It will be on air. This, this, this okay. is yes, it's all it's all part of it. So, so go all right. For it. Um, okay. Uh, we're going to do another event in October of this year. Okay. It's called Invitation to Murder. <gasps> right. Um, and I can't say too much about it. Um, I'll mention the word masquerade, and that's about it. Okay, Dougie. And okay. what are, what are the dates for that one? Oh God. Um. I'll just have to check a second. <laughs> Rob, do you know them? No. I will just have to check a second. <laughs> <laughs> will it be about around about Halloween? Yeah, I'll just get the precise dates. There so I'm go. not saying the wrong thing. Um, <laughs> this is not very professional, is it? <laughs> That's okay. Don't worry. Well, welcome if to the last I... show. <laughs> It's the one. It's, it's, it's the one thing if you've, if you've ever ever heard to listen to the show. We're we're not professional. We do this for fun and just try to bring some more information and wonderful things into the world. Okay, I've got it. Um, it's the twenty seventh to the 29th of October this year. Okay, dokie. And uh, how can people get in contact with you to book up? Um, so we've got a page, a fear of dark page on Facebook. We've also got a website, mm-hmm. which is www.fearofthedark.co.uk, okay. and that has a contact form on it. Um, alternatively, if you don't know me personally, then um, I guess via Rob. Rob could pass. Yep. Any pass any messages on? Um, pass messages on. They will get sent to release straight away. And yeah, that's about. I think that's. A few ways to, to contact us. Okie dokie. So if you go across to uh, fearofthedark.co.uk, uh, you'll find all the information up there for upcoming games and a contact form to get in touch. Or, of course, you can just uh, email the show, larpbookshow at gmail.com, uh, with some details, and we'll pass them on quite merrily. So I think that's probably it. 
Let's, uh, let's cue the music again. So again, uh, email the show, larpbookshow at gmail.com. Go across to larpbook.com for news, reviews, and other wonderful things there all about the live-action role-play scene. Uh, the music was provided by Ben Sound at bensound.com. Uh, my name's Stuart, that's Rob, that's Emily, that's Sue. Uh, have a fantastic time, everybody, and see you all soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.